today we're going to talk about chapter one, which just covers general principles. It's kind of a review of, um, you know, some math like geometry and stuff like that, that should be um, more fresh in your mind, hopefully, in order to be successful in this class. So let's define a few things first. I will say that most of the time there's not this many like words in my notes, but uh, at the beginning of the semester, especially sometimes we have to just like establish a foundation with definitions and things like that before we can move forward and do a lot of practice problems. Um, so this class is a uh, rigid body mechanics or otherwise known as statics. Okay, and so what we are talking about, what we mean by that is that we have bodies at rest. Okay, so they're not moving. Subject to force, forces acting on them, and they're in equilibrium. So things are not moving, but there are forces acting on them, and they're in equilibrium. Okay, and the principles that we apply in this class, um, they are based on geometry, typically. So hopefully you feel strong in geometry. And if not, like I said, I've been tutoring since 2005. So come come talk to me at office hours and I'll help you if you need to do some refresh problems. Okay, um, but the principles of this class are based on geometry. And I would say towards the end, some some calculus. So let's talk about a few um, definitions. What do you think of when you hear the word mass? I would say weight. Okay. Yeah, so it is like a quantity of matter. Okay. Now, weight in a broader term, mass in a broader term is like resistance to change in velocity. So if we're trying to move something, Jessica, right, if we're trying to move it, how hard is it to move? <laughs> that is the amount of the quantity of matter that we have. So mass is a quantity of matter um, that measures the resistance to change in velocity. How hard is it to get it to move? So I used the word force already. What does that mean to you, the word force? Uh, like a push or a pull? Perfect. It's a push or a pull. Um, and in this class, we also need to make sure very specifically that push or pull, we're going to assign a magnitude, aka like how big or how small, a direction, which way is it going, and a point of application, where is it applied. Okay. So it is a push or a pull. that has a magnitude, a direction, and a point of application. Okay, what about the word particle? What do you think of when you hear the word particle?
could it be just just an object with some mass? Yes, it is some mass, but its size is neglected, right? We think of like a dot, like a particle is like a dot. It's because we're neglecting the size, okay? So it is a mass whose size is neglected. What do I mean by rigid body? Is it um, like an object that or a mass that would have some sort of friction? Not quite. So rigid to me means that like, it's not gonna deform. Okay, so you've got this shape that's not gonna change even when you apply a load. Okay, so if you're pushing or pulling on it, it's not going to deform. It's a rigid body. So that's what I mean by that. So its uh, shape does not change um, when a load is applied. And what do I mean by concentrated force? Is it when a force is applied to like a certain area? Yeah, very good. So it's your load, but it's acting at one point, at one specific point. Question so far. Who remembers Newton's laws of motion? What's the first law? Is the first one uh, an object in motion stays in motion? Very good, Alyssa. Objects at rest, stay at rest and objects 
in motion, stay in motion, unless acted upon by an outside source. Is that uh, the second one, the sum of all forces equals a mass times acceleration? Very good. Yes. Force is equal to mass times acceleration. And the third one should be uh, for every reaction, there is an equal or opposite. No. Nope. Equal reaction back to it, right? You got it, Franklin. Yes. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Okay, so you've probably heard of all of those, but not sure if you heard of this one. Newton did a lot of things. <laughs> this is Newton's law of gravitational attraction. Which it's an equation that says F equals G times m1 m2 over r squared and i'll tell you what each of those variables means so f is the gravitational force g is the gravitational constant which is 66.73 times 10 to the negative 12 meters cubed over kilograms seconds squared. Units matter in this class a lot. Both of these masses, these M's represent masses. So it's the mass of each object you're talking about because you're talking about the gravitational attraction between the two objects. So it's the mass of objects one and two. But you're treating them as particles, okay? And then little r represents the distance between them. So the distance between, if they're already particles, you're good. If they're not particles, you would look at the distance between the centers of masses and kind of treat them like particles, okay? So distance between the two particles or centers of mass so this applies to any two objects any two objects have some sort of gravitational attraction between them too um, now you may have not used this exact equation before but i'm sure 
that you have used W equals MG. And the reason you know that is this is actually kind of the first equation, but applied to you on Earth. So you're talking about the attraction between the huge Earth and you as a, the Earth is a particle and you are a particle. Okay, so W equals MG is applicable like on Earth and talking about like you on Earth. So W representing the force due to gravity or as we know it, AKA weight. Or sometimes you might see people say F sub G for gravity. M representing your mass. G representing gravity, the acceleration due to gravity. And this should look kind of familiar because it's essentially a more specific version of the second law, Newton's second law, right? So note the second law is F equals MA, right? Question so far? Now, like I said, units are super duper important. I talk about them on the syllabus. You will get marked down heavily if you don't include units on your assignments. Okay, so make sure you include units. Let's talk about some units because we're going to be flip-flopping back and forth between SI and US customary units. So we'll talk about both. So SI versus US customary units. So we'll make like a little table. So for SI, for example, what is the, the unit of measure, the standard unit of measure that you would use for length? Meters. Very good. What's the standard unit, unit of measure you'd use for time? Seconds. Very good. What's the standard unit of measure you would use for mass? Kilograms. Very good. What's the standard unit of a measure you would use for force? Newton. Very good. And what would be um, gravity? If you're putting gravity into an equation, what would the value of gravity be? And what would the units of gravity be? Gravity. Um, meters per second square. Very good. And what number do you put in front of it? 9.8. We're going to use 9.81 in this class to be a little more specific. Meters per second squared. Very good. Question so far? So for U.S. customary units, let's look at the difference. What is the standard unit of measure for length for U.S. customary units? Mm -hmm. How about for time? Is it hours? It's actually seconds. They actually oh, match yeah. for once. <laughs> uh, we're going to skip mass. How about force?
Would that be foot pounds? Mm, it's just pounds. A pounds. Okay. And what uh, would you put in for gravity if you're working with U.S. units? I think it's same. Mm -mm, mm -mm. First of all, what would the units be for gravity? Uh, feet per second squared. Very good. Feet per second squared. And does anyone know the number we put there? Would it not be the same thing? No way. Because meters per second squared is not the same units as feet per second squared. So there would be some conversion, right? Yeah. Anyone know the number? Would it just be 29.4? No. The number we use is 32.2. Does that sound familiar? No? <laughs> okay. Um, and then, okay, bonus points for anyone who knows what the mass unit is for U.S. Anyone? Oh, like grams? Mm -mm. Ounces? Mm -mm. Unless it's also kilograms? Mm -mm. Pounds? It's a slug. Have you heard of a slug? What? <laughs> what? Okay, so these two are kind of special. These, This one and this one. Okay, a slug is just a derived unit, meaning if we know feet, seconds, pounds, and everything, and we rearrange the variables to solve for what mass would be for like F equals MA, and we rearrange the units, then we would find out that the units would be pounds, seconds squared, over feet. And then that's just kind of crazy. So then we go, we're going to call that jumble of units a slug. Okay, and same for F equals MA and the SI units. If you like look at what all the variables would be together for F equals MA to get F, you would actually technically get kilograms, meters over second squared. But we don't want to write that because it's annoying. So we call it a Newton. So these both are what we call derived units. from your W equals MG equation. Make a note to yourself, units matter. Okay, especially in this class, units matter, okay? Always carry them down in your work. Don't just try and throw them in at the end. Carry them down throughout your work. This is on the syllabus. So you've been warned. Let's talk about uh, some unit conversions. Uh, one foot is how many inches? Well, 12. Very good, 12 inches. Uh, how many feet, how many feet are in one mile? 5,280. Very good. 5,280. Um, what do you call a thousand pounds? Half a ton. <laughs> yeah, okay, true. Half a ton. It's special nickname uh, that I had never heard of either before this class is a kip. So if I'm giving you like five kips, I mean 5,000 pounds. And what a kip stands for literally is a kilo pound. 
So it's shortened for kip. Is a thousand pounds. Kilo, thousand, thousand pounds. And like Ivan was alluding to, two thousand pounds is called what? A ton. One ton. Uh, do you know the conversion? What is one pound in terms of newtons? Anyone? Four point four four eight. One slug in terms of kilograms. Fourteen point five nine. And one foot in terms of meters. Does anyone know this one? Do you know ish what it is? Is it like around 0.3? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's like a third-ish, right? Yeah, okay. So it's point three zero four eight meters is one foot. The other thing you need to know is your prefixes. So, hmm, does anyone know, like, what 10 to the 9th is? Yo, a lot of teachers just skip chapter one. I'm telling you, this is important to review this stuff, right? They're always just assuming you remember. Does anyone know what 10 to the ninth is? Is it a giga? Yeah, giga. Big G for giga. Uh, how about 10 to the sixth? Yeah, big M for mega. Oh, I don't want that to look like a mu, sorry. <laughs> big M for mega. How about 10 to the 3? Little K for kilo. Super confusing. Why it's little, I don't know. Um... 10 to the negative 3. Little m for milli. 10 to the negative 6. Micro? Very good. Mu for micro. And 10 to the negative 9. Nano. Very good. Little n for nano. Okay, so these are all things like that are just baseline expected you know. Now, luckily, I'm not asking you to memorize anything in this class. So as long as you wrote it down and you know where to reference it, you should be good to go. Of course, if you do memorize it, it'll just kind of speed up the process when you're doing your other stuff, right? Questions so far? Okay, let's do um, a couple examples. We probably only have time to do one example, and then I'll talk to you about the rest of the lecture after. Okay, so examples. 
So number one, the example says to convert two kilometers per hour into meters per second. And after you do that, then change it to feet per second. Okay, so there's two different ways you, that are acceptable in this class to show your work. You should have learned this in chemistry. It's called, in chemistry, called stoichiometry. You want to follow your units, okay? Uh, so one, some teachers do, like, what's called the train track method. So, for example, you just set up, like, a big, long, straight line, and you write with what you're starting with, which is one kilometer per hour. So you put, sorry, two kilometers on top per one hour on bottom and you draw a line then you think units cross off just like variables do okay so like if two if one variable is on top and one variable is on the bottom then you can reduce so you can do the same thing with units so we're trying to get from kilometers to hour to meters per second so for example let's convert kilometers to meters to get rid of kilometers because kilometers is in the numerator we're going to put kilometers in the denominator so that they cross off so we'll put kilometers here in the bottom and then put meters here on top always go through your base unit you want to go from kilometers to meters and what is the conversion one thousand meters in one kilometer very good and that's where you write the numbers one thousand meters for one kilometer that one's sometimes tricky because it's a little k but kilometers are bigger than meters takes a thousand meters to make one kilometer all right so you always want to follow your units so kilometers are crossed off which means we're left in meters right now which is good because that's what we want so we want to keep meters on top but we want to be able to get rid of hours hours is currently on the bottom so we're going to go ahead and put hours on top that way it'll cross off and we're going to go through something we know so we know how many minutes are in an hour what's that what's that conversion One hour is 60 minutes. Very good. And that's where you put the numbers. You follow your units because hours are on top and bottom. They cross off. We're left in minutes, but we don't want minutes. We actually want seconds. So because minutes are in the denominator, we're going to put the minutes in the numerator here. And we are going to put seconds in the denominator. What's that conversion? One minute is 60 seconds. Very good. One minute is 60 seconds. You follow your units. Your minutes cross off. You're left in seconds, which is what you want. Okay, so we're left in meters per second. Those are the units we want. And then what you do is you just multiply across in the numerator and you multiply across in the denominator and then you divide. So what do you get after you do all that work? Get about 0.56 meters per second. Very good. And in this class, luckily, unlike chemistry, I don't really care about sig figs. So as long as you, if you did two, if you did two decimal places or three decimal places, I don't really care. As long as you're kind of reasonable and you're rounding properly, then you should be fine and good to go. Okay. Questions so far? So like I said, make sure you note to yourself that units cross off just like variables do. Okay, so the other way to show your work is to just do like parentheses for each of those conversion factors. So for example, we could start with our 0.556 meters per second um, in our calculator though. I probably wouldn't round it. I would like keep that number in our calculator. And then I would write a separate parenthesis here for our conversion factor. So what units should go on bottom in our conversion factor? Remember, we're trying to bring it to feet per second. So what units should go on bottom?
meters. Why should I put meters on bottom? Because it'll cancel, cancel it out. Very good. And so what units should I put on top? Feet. Why? Because that's what we're trying to get. Very good. And we are left in feet on the top and seconds on the bottom, which is good. So we just have to figure out what numbers to put where. So what should I put in front of feet? Go back to your notes. What's the conversion from feet to meters? One foot over 0 .0 0 0.3048 meters. Perfect. Okay, multiply across and bottom, divide. What do you get? What do you get when you multiply across and bottom divide? What do you get? 1.824. And what are your units? Uh, feet over seconds. Very good. Okay, so again, either way you show your work is fine, the train tracks way or the parentheses way, but both ways you're following your units, you're crossing them off, you're making sure that you end in the units you wanna end in, but you're taking the proper steps in between, okay? What if they asked you, to convert 300 pound seconds and 52 slugs per foot cubed into SI units. So they're expecting you to know what that means, what SI units mean. So let's say I wanted to do the first one, um, the parentheses way. So I'm gonna start off with 300 pound seconds. I'm going to multiply by something. I want to get rid of pounds. So where should I put pounds, top or bottom? On the bottom. Correct. Why? It cancel it out. Very good, because pounds is in the numerator. We want to get rid of it because it's a U.S. unit and we're trying to convert to SI units. So we'll put pounds on the bottom, but we want SI units. So what unit should we put on top? Uh, okay. Yes, Newtons. Yeah. So Newtons go on top. And what number should go in front of Newtons? Look at your notes. 4.448. Very good. And what number should go in front of pounds? One. Very good. What do you get? One thousand three hundred thirty-four point four. What are your units? Newtons per second. 
not per, because per means divide, right? So just Newton seconds. seconds. <laughs> yeah. So it sounds weird, but uh, if you say per, that means you're dividing, and that's not what you mean. So you could have said 1,334.4 Newton seconds, or if you wanted to be fancy, you could say 1.33 kilonewton seconds if you wanted to just, like, have a smaller number, you know? So that's the first method of showing your work, or uh, let's do the second way, the train track way for that second uh, problem, where it wants you to convert 52 slugs... per one foot cubed okay what should I do Convert to kilograms. How do I do that? What units go on? Slugs. Top? Okay, slugs. In the denominator. And the denominator. denominator. Good. The numerator is uh, 14.59 kilograms. Yeah, perfect. Whoops. Four. But that's to one slug. Yeah. Correct. 14.59 kg for one slug. Very good. And we follow our units, and we are sure we put slugs in the right spot because they cross off. Now what? Change speed to meters. Okay, we need to go to meters. Um, what unit should we put on top? Feet. Okay, now it's feet, but it's feet cubed because we want them to cross off, right? And then what units go on bottom? Meter. Correct, but meters Meter cube. cubed. <laughs> good. Now, if we're using the same conversion we had, you know, where it was 0. 0.3048, because we're cubing the uh, units, we have to cube the number as well, okay? So even though this is like a one, you would technically write one cubed, okay? It's like you're, you're um, distributing that cube, right, to the number and the unit. It's going to change your answer, so don't forget that part. If you're scoring units or cubing units, you have to square or cube the number as well. You're going to follow your units. You get to cross off your feet cubed. You're left in kilograms, which is an SI unit. You're left in meters cubed, which is an SI unit. You're going to multiply across in the numerator. You're going to multiply across in the denominator and divide. What do you get? Mm, it's not quite what I got. It's like close, but not quite. Yeah, that's what I got. Okay, so I got 2,000, sorry, 26,792. And what were your units? Alejandro had the correct units, and um, there should never be a guess, right? You shouldn't be guessing or shooting from the hip when you're looking for the units because you just look at what's left over. What are my green check marks? What is not crossed off in my work? Keep the numerator, keep the denominator, no guessing. Kilogram 
per meter cubed. Okay. Or if you wanted to be fancy and show off, you could write it as like 26.8 megagrams per meter cubed if you wanted. So the key to the key to that problem right there, I would say, is this part where you have to remember to cube it. So those are a couple examples of how I want to see your work done. That's how you're going to receive full credit is if you show your work like that. Okay, either way, you can use the parentheses or you can use the train tracks, but you need to be following your units. So I would suggest on your own at home, you should try example 1.3 in the book. And you're welcome. I will spoon feed it to you. It's on page 14. So that is not a homework assignment or anything. That's just for you to get extra practice because a lot of times it's easy to just watch me do something and you think you know how to do it, but it's a different story when you try and do it on your own, right? So uh, as they say, math is not a spectator sport. You can't just watch and be like, I get it. You got to do it yourself. You got to put pen to paper. So I would suggest trying to do example 1.3 at home on your own to see if you can do it on your own. Okay. That's just extra practice for you. You don't have to do it. It's not required, but it might be a good idea to just see if you can do it on your own. So um, we did finish chapter one because that chapter one is really just a review section. Um, it's all about following your units um, and just kind of getting ready for what's to come. So our general principles are all the uh, fundamentals, the foundation that you should already have coming into this class, right? Like Deepak already knew the three laws of Newton's law, right? It's not like we were teaching it to you for the first time, you know? You should already know all these units and things like that. It was just a review. Um, so that was all of chapter one.